your mask shooter. If you don't wear a mask, it will track you down and shoot you. A lot of people have been taking this pandemic very seriously, but some of us not so much. So today we will solve this problem by creating a device that will shoot the people who do not wear a mask. Apart from all the jokes, this video is actually meant to spread awareness for wearing masks. If you are someone who doesn't wear a mask, please consider the safety of yourself and the safety of others, because together we can help end this pandemic. Now, if you know someone who doesn't wear a mask, send them this video and tell them this is what will happen if they don't wear a mask. So without further ado, let's get started. The concept of this project is fairly simple. We have a simple base and on top of this base, we will add our gun. Now the gun will be able to rotate because there will be a motor attached to the base. We will also attach a motor to the trigger so that we can fire whenever we want. Then we will attach a camera on top of this gun. This will allow us to detect the person, whether they are wearing a mask, whether they are moving, so we can easily track them and know their location. And all of this information will be fed back to our laptop and the laptop will do all the processing and it will send the commands to our controller which will turn on the motors based on these commands so this way we will have a complete system that allows us to track the person and shoot them whenever they are not wearing a mask so the first step is to find a gun now i know what you're thinking why do you need a specific gun well, it's very important because we have to be very accurate and very precise when we are shooting these idiots. So I took a step back and I started sketching this perfect design of a gun. And it took me hours and hours until I reached perfection. So now that we have the template for our perfect gun, we need to go and find it online. Now that we have the gun, it's time for some testing. Run. So now that we are done with our gun, we are going to start with the base. So to design the base, we will use a 3D modeling software. We will create the base very heavy so that it can hold the weight of the gun. The gun itself is quite long, so we need to make sure when the movement of the base is done, it does not vibrate a lot. So we will keep thick layers of the base. To hold the gun, we are going to create a structure on top of the base that will have a cavity to actually accept the gun. But we will not make it at a 90 degree angle because it will be very easy to break. So we will give it a curve that will have thicker end and then at the top, it will be quite small to accommodate the gun cavity. So now our design is complete and we have to build it. And you might be thinking I would use 3D printing or CNC or laser or something like that to actually build it. But you are wrong. Check out my new technique in which we can build this instantly. There we go. True story. So despite the magic that I did earlier, this base is actually made up of MDF. These are medium density fiber boards that are stacked up together to create this solid and heavy base. And this will allow us to very easily add our gun to it and it will not vibrate a lot. And this, as you can see, it is quite heavy. I have to use both of my hands to lift it up. And also we have added a bearing here that allows this smooth rotation. So if we don't have a bearing, the rotation will not be smooth because there will be friction between the moving objects. So the next step is to attach our servo motor. Now this is not a small servo motor, this is quite large and the reason we have chosen this one is so that it can carry all this weight around and it can rotate easily. So now we are going to attach our gun to the base. Now I could design something, I could 3D print to attach these two together, but 
I'm lazy. I'm going to use cable tie. So now is the firing mechanism. So whenever we want to fire, we will trigger this button. So how can we do that? We will use another motor that is very similar to what we used before and we will simply place it here and that will allow it to trigger when it rotates. So when it moves, we will give it the command to rotate and it will hit the button and it will trigger. So now I have added the controller to the system and I've also attached the motors to the controller. So we will be able to run our motors by simply writing some code. So let's say I send the command of 20 degrees so the motor moves to 20 degrees. And if I send the command of let's say 80, it will move to 80 degrees. And you can see the movement is quite smooth. The same thing goes for the trigger motor. If I send the command of 180, this means turn on the trigger all the way. So we can fire our gun by sending the command of 180 degrees. So now that the motors are tested and we are able to send the command of any angle that we require, we need to know what angle do we need to send it to. So to understand this or to get this information, we need to find the body. So instead of finding the face of the person, we are going to track the whole body because in a larger image, if the person is completely visible, it will be very hard to find a very small face. So instead of detecting the face, we will detect the complete body. And based on this body, we are going to estimate the position of the face. Once we know the location, we can estimate the value of the rotation based on this location. Keeping this in mind, I wrote a program to first find the complete body estimation using the media pipe package, which is provided by Google. Using this body pose, we can estimate the face, location and the size. This gives us a decent amount of tracking accuracy. To track the person, we now need to send commands to the motor. But how does the tracking work? Let's say the person moves on the side. To move our gun, we send it a speed of 20. And when it reaches the person, we send a speed of 0. But the problem here is that the gun cannot instantly go from 20 to 0. When we stop it, it will go a bit further because of the momentum that was built up. To solve this issue, we will use a controller called the PID. Now, without going into too much details, this controller helps us stop when it reaches the person. So while the gun is moving towards the person, instead of giving a constant speed of 20, we will keep reducing it as it moves closer to the person so it stops at the correct position. In practice, you can see here that the initial tracking is quite bad because the system is not tuned properly. But after some time, this is the result that I got, which is quite good, although it could be further improved. Next, we have to find whether the face detected has a mask or not. To accomplish this, I decided to use artificial intelligence. Here, we will teach the system how to differentiate between a face with a mask and a face without a mask. To do this, we will need lots of images of faces with mask and without mask. So I wrote a script to collect images using my webcam. Here, I had to get a bit creative to add different types of images. Usually we would add a lot of images of different people to make the system more reliable. But here I just added some props like the glasses and a hat to make the images different. This method is how a baby learns to differentiate between a cat and a dog or an apple and a banana. So I collected about a thousand images with the mask and a thousand images without the mask. Next I imported all the images and trained the model. After training you can see the results are quite good. It is quite robustly able to differentiate between a face with a mask and a face without. This method is great because in the future, if we wanted to improve, we could simply add more data of other people and different scenarios and retrain the model. But now was the difficult part. To run this model, I had to spend hours and hours writing the code. Next, I embedded this to the previous code and tested it out. The detection and classification results were great. The face was getting tracked and the system was able to determine if the person was wearing a mask or not. For the last step, we just had to activate the trigger if the person was not wearing a mask. And we also had to load our gun. And now for the final result. 